Oprah will do whatever it takes to cover her own ass and to placate whoever she thinks is higher up than her. She's a double-minded man, which, according to scripture, makes her disabled in all her ways. I don't know why anybody would trust her. I tell people not to trust people like her. But that's just me. I mean, a lot of people think I'm just too hard on celebrities. No, because if you're getting my dollar to fill your pocket to pay for your mansion, then you need to show me that you're worth my time. Now, I'm not saying that all celebrities are horrible, but I'm also saying that you, as the individual, need to judge what you're willing to take from the celebrities you support with their hard-earned money. Remember, they're not entertaining you for free. They are actually doing all this because they get monetary gain out of it. So you need to start paying attention to who you're giving your money to. Okay, you need to start paying attention to who you give your money to. Period. Now here's the other thing. When we look at life, a celebrity might make a whole bunch of money, but usually ends up spending, I mean, there are celebrities that end up spending a lot of it, and then there are celebrities that are smart, that will invest, that will live modestly. Um, but it's not only about the money. I've heard a lot of stories, um, allegedly, of celebrities being forced to do things that were against their moral compass, maybe even the religious ones. And they were forced to do this because they were told that if they didn't, their career would be halted. They'd be blackballed. Um, but speaking of being blackballed, let's talk about Cat Williams. Let's talk about how this little man with all that mouth, and I'm glad he got it, too. I'm glad Cat said what he said. And I'm glad that people are, that some are running scared and others are speaking up. Um, can I just say... Cat Williams did not lie. Cat Williams is a very entertaining man. He can make any story sound hilarious. But I haven't heard him lie yet. And a lot of what he would say, I knew about. I really did. I actually knew about some of the stories. Because, you know, you hear things. You hear lesser known people make statements and then don't follow up because... They know that they're not big enough to cause a ruckus, but they just want it out there. So that when it does come out, we can go back and see that, you know, they did speak out. It, it helps with some people's mindsets. Um, but let's be honest here. Let's be really honest. When I, okay, and I'm going to say this. I did not watch the video. All I did was read the thumbnail and the title where it said that Cedric the Entertainer and Ricky Smiley were trying to sue Cat Williams for a lot of what he said. Now, like I said before, I have not watched this video. So just going by that little the thumbnail I read in the title, I'm going to tell you what I think. Number one. The only thing Ricky Smiley need to be concerned about is the rhinoplasty he desperately needs. Okay? Until he goes to a uh, competent plastic surgeon to get his nose fixed so that it can look like something human and recognize him on the face, he, he need to just save up for that. And Cedric the Entertainer has not been entertaining in forever. Forever, ever, forever? Yeah, he hasn't been entertaining in the longest time. But of course, you want to jump on a man that's funny without lying, without exaggerating. Because the only thing, it's funny, it's like that old Shakespeare saying, we think she does protest too much, because why? Why? All you had to do was come out and make a video like, you know you're lying. And even if you wanted to go back on the same podcast Cat Williams was on and ask the host, hey, can you bring Cat back? Let's... Me, Cat, Ricky, let's all sit down, let's talk to you, moderate, whatever. If it was a lie, you can have that same platform, bring out your own truth, but oh, that's right. You look in the stew. Why, why are you trying to protect your ass so much, huh? What? Did somebody shock a nerve? Did the truth really hurt you? 
It was said in an entertaining manner. Chad Williams is a laugh a second. Not even a laugh a minute, a laugh a second. Okay? But, you know, I'm just very fond of Chad Williams. That man has me rolling for the moment he opened up his mouth because he's honest and he can be serious, but he also has a way of making the heavy stuff he has to talk about, the heavy stuff he wants to let you know, to be aware of. He doesn't even go in depth to be aware of. He wants to make it lighter so that it's more palatable. And I appreciate it. I appreciate a man who actually wants to do something to get truth out, but to make it in a chain name. Because that's why I feel like I can't be a stand-up comedian. I haven't suffered enough yet. Yes, I have suffered, I know, but not enough. So that's why I can't do stand-up comedy, which is why I appreciate people like Cat Williams and Mr. Eric Schwartz movie. <laughs> I know, he just goes by Eric Schwartz now, but I, I remember in the beginning when he went by Smoothie. And I really do appreciate his comedy because it's funny and relatable. Like Cat Williams, funny and relatable comedy really doesn't need to come back. I mean, now we're into the age of woke, and if a comedian makes a joke, about his own life, his own sex life or anything, if somebody takes offense to it in the audience, they feel like they should have a platform to come up and address their grievances in the middle of a damn show that they pay money to see because they didn't like what a comedian said. Number one, I would never sit up front at a comedy show. I know I'm a target. I already know, so I'll sit way in the back of the dark. You wouldn't even know I'm there. But, if you go to a comedy show, and you feel roasted, even if you don't feel like laughing, laugh. Unless it's egregiously disrespectful about you personally, and if you notice, a lot of stand-up comics make generalizations about stuff they see. But they're not trying to be disrespectful. A lot of their jokes have nothing to do with you. Okay, they didn't know you were coming. They, they didn't make that joke to annoy you. They made that joke because it's in their joke set for that time period. That's why they made the joke. Nobody knew you were coming. You're not that special. No one gives a fuck. Stop it. Just stop it. Stop having me cat this syndrome. Go get tested and treated for that because some of you have made character syndrome. Every time you hear something you don't like, you have to make a great point out of it. If you're walking and you hear something in passing, Keep walking. Unless you hear something that immediately identifies you or something that you cannot turn away from. Because I know we all have our, I just can't ignore that. We all have that. But main character people seem to think everything needs their assistance. No, that, that's not even true about life. Uh, I, I pity if they have kids because that would just be horrible that your parent would be the main character at your birthday party for the rest of your natural life. Ugh. That would just suck. That'd be horrible. Oh well. If you are suffering from main character syndrome, go get help. And by that I mean, take yourself off of social media. It's hard invitations to gatherings that you usually show your ass at. Start showing people by your actions that you don't have to make it all about you. There's a support group for practically everything. I'm sure there's a support group for me had their narcissist Karen's or Darren's. And no, I don't say Ken or Kevin. To me, a Kevin is a very stupid person. And like someone who didn't finish kindergarten type of stupidity. And then there are conveners, which are their female counterparts. And when I say Karen, I mean Mel Darren's. That's what I mean. Her summer. Ken, when I hear Ken, I think of Bobby and Ken. Uh, the aesthetically pleasing couple with the stereotypical bodies, stereotypical hair, stereotypical attitude, and you just want to murder them in their sleep. Yes, I said that. Because you all know... That, well, those who, of you who know me know perky people are my biggest pet peeves. Why are you so perky? Why? Ha have you not lived? Do you not know life? And see, I know Jesus, and I'm still not perky. And I love the Lord. Still not perky. 
I don't think this world is full of sunshine, rainbows, and lollipops. I'm a realist. I actually expect the best, but I plan and I prep for the absolute worst. As a realist, as I should. Huh, I bet let's get on to a new topic. Okay. I don't know if any of you care. Because probably not. But... I would like to make it perfectly clear to you that it's okay to have bad days. I mean, I know you feel like everybody looks at you and if you have a bad day, if you get down, what is somebody else going to do? Listen, I'm going to have to tell you what I tell other people in my life. Don't keep thinking about everybody else because the moment you die and you in the ground, people are going to find somebody else to do for them what you were doing for them. Or guess what they'll do with themselves. Just, how can I put this? Remember, you are love of God the Father if nobody else loves you. I just want you to know that there's more than just hope for you. Of course there's hope. While you're living, while you're proving there's hope. But there's more. Through Jesus Christ, salvation is for you. The free gift of salvation. So, you know, if you have a few minutes of your time and you just want to start anew. The Bible says, if any man being Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things will become new. If you give Jesus two minutes of you confessing with your mouth that he is the Lord's Savior and believe in your heart, but in addition, you have to confess your sins and tell Jesus you want him to be the Lord of your life. And then once you make that confession, once you have repented, get a Bible. And I'm not going to say that I recommend the King James. The only Bible that exists to me is the King James. And the only study companion in that would be the Orthodox Jewish Bible. I have my reasons. I'll go into that for a later podcast. But once you have a good King James Bible, not the new King James, King James, without the Apocrypha, what you do is you start seeking God while you're in your home, wherever you may be. And then ask him to lead you to a godly fellowship where you can be encouraged and properly spiritually fed and have those believers that will help you in this walk with Christ. Okay? I hope everyone had a great time tonight. I know I did. This is my catch-all rant. And y'all be good and happy January birthday to everyone born in January. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.